Fall in love with LA every day with How to LA, a podcast helping curious Angelinos connect with their city. Subscribe to How to LA wherever you listen to podcasts for new episodes five days a week, Monday through Friday. LAist Studios. Today on the LA Report, three and a half years in prison for veteran LA politician Mark Ridley Thomas, convicted of federal corruption charges. Mark Ridley Thomas was one of the longest serving and most accomplished elected officials in LA history. LA civics and democracy correspondent Frank Stoltz will have more on that. And we're almost through day one of a two-day excessive heat warning for virtually all of Southern California. So what do you do if you have to work in that heat? It's Monday, August 28th. I'm Nick Roman. This is the LA Report from LA State 89.3. Veteran L.A. politician Mark Ridley Thomas was sentenced today to three and a half years in federal prison for trading his votes as an L.A. County supervisor to get benefits from USC for his son. His attorney had asked for home confinement for the former supervisor, state lawmaker, and member of the L.A. City Council. That was basically the sentence given earlier this year to USC Dean Marilyn Flynn. She had provided the benefits to Ridley Thomas, but she also pled guilty. Ridley Thomas instead fought the charges, and L.A. civics and democracy correspondent Frank Stoltz says federal prosecutors wanted a sentence much more harsh than home confinement. They said absolutely not because he is elected official, uh, because he, you know, is the one in their view who sort of um, started this conspiracy or provoked this conspiracy with the USC dean that he deserves a lot more. Prosecutors wanted a six-year sentence. In the end, the 68-year-old Ridley Thomas got about half that from U.S. District Court Judge Dale Fisher. He also got a lecture. Judge Fisher told him that he had victimized the entire community, that he has committed serious crimes, has not accepted responsibility, and has shown no remorse. Ridley Thomas is appealing the guilty verdict. Mark Ridley Thomas was a giant in L.A. politics for decades. Frank Stoltz says as a county supervisor, he succeeded in erasing the Killer King reputation that for years had hung over the Martin Luther King Jr. Hospital in South L.A. And it was really in disrepair. And Mark Ridley Thomas championed that effort and worked through you know, a, a whole series of hurdles to get Martin Luther King Jr. Community Hospital um, refashioned, rebuilt essentially from the ground up. And uh, now it's a, a thriving community hospital in, a, in an area of L.A. and South L.A. that is, you know, very much in need of that. L.A.'s correspondent Frank Stoltz, Ridley Thomas, has been ordered to report to federal prison on November 13th. State Attorney General Rob Bonta is suing Chino Valley Unified School District over its new gender identity disclosure policy. It was adopted by the school board last week, and it requires the district to alert parents when a student comes out as transgender or changes their gender or pronouns. Bonta says that violates privacy rights for LGBTQ plus students. It presents students with a terrible choice. Either walk back your rights to gender identity and gender expression, to be yourself, to be who you are, or face the risk of serious harm, mental harm, emotional harm, physical harm. The Chino Valley Unified School District says its attorneys are reviewing the lawsuit. After a break, hey, it's hot. Help, how hot is it, Nick? Well, stick around, I'm going to tell you. I'm Tanya Mosley, co-host of Fresh Air and the award-winning podcast, Truth Be Told. And I'm coming to Pasadena for a taping of an episode at LA's studios. Let's face it, the world sometimes feels like a dumpster fire. Join me and a few of my favorite guests for a dynamic conversation about finding joy and personal freedom in the midst of it all. Stick around afterwards for some good food and great music. August 31st at the Crawford. Tickets at LAist.com slash events. This is the L.A. Report. I'm Nick Roman. 
Well, my mid-afternoon today was 101 degrees at the Orange County Bureau, 102 at the L.A. Studios in Pasadena, 107 in Chatsworth. Well, you get the idea. Time to camp out inside with the air conditioner. Here's L.A. Senior Reporter Nick Gerda. An excessive heat warning is in place for large swaths of Southern California, with inland valleys hit especially hard. That includes the San Gabriel and San Fernando Valleys. Some areas are forecast to hit highs of 98 to 109 degrees. Tips to stay safe include sipping lots of water all day, avoiding being outside in direct sunlight, and checking in on family and friends. Looking for a place to cool down? We put together a list of maps and other info on official cooling centers across the region. In some areas, facilities are staying open as late as 9 p.m. to help people escape the heat. The full list of cooling centers is available at laist.com. That's laist.com. For LAist 89.3, I'm Nick Gerda. But what if you got to work in the heat? I mean, what do you do then? LAist correspondent Leslie Berestein Rojas checked in with some of East LA's food truck vendors to figure out how they're surviving on a very hot workday. It was noon and already 97 degrees on Atlantic Boulevard, where customers lined up under a canopy to order at the El Monchis food truck. Co-owner Rosa Solis was visibly perspiring at the order window. But no matter, she said. If we don't work, then how do we eat, she said. Hot or cold, she was staying. There are no specific heat safety rules that govern food trucks, but those who operate them say they find ways to protect themselves, like taking breaks and drinking lots of water. Pues tomar mucha agua, tomar aguas frescas. So Lisa at least has a small AC unit. Around the corner on Whittier Boulevard, Marisol Covarrubias made do at her seafood truck with just a fan. She looked forward to taking her breaks. I love Target. <laughs> For the air conditioning. For LAS 89.3, I'm Leslie Berestein Rojas. Thanks for listening to the LA Report. I'm Nick Roman. Be sure to join us again tomorrow. The LA Report is produced by Libby Rainey and Tiffany Ujie. Megan Garvey is the executive editor. Catherine Mailhouse, the director of content development. Our engineer is Tui Mao. Original music by Scott Kelly. You can read more about our stories at LAist.com. You can also listen live anytime on the LAist app or on the radio at 89.3 FM. You know, listeners like you help make the LA Report possible, so please donate at LAist.com slash join. This podcast is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live.